So the Environmental Law and Policy Clinic is an interdisciplinary clinic. By design, we have groups of students from the Nicholas School, the Environment, and other graduate programs at Duke who work in the environmental sciences, working together with law students on teams involving any number of different kind of problems that individual community groups or individual community members have in this general sphere of what we call environmental problems or natural resource conservation problems or a combination of both. We made a very conscientious decision at the beginning that we would not focus on any particular aspect of environmental law other than environmental justice. Environmental justice is the thread that links all of our different cases. We did not want to specialize on something like, you know, clean water, clean air, endangered species. We wanted to be able to be responsive to the needs of the community. So my role with the Duke Environmental Law and Policy Clinic is to serve as co-director with Michelle Nolan, who is also serving as co-director. Between the two of us, we divide responsibilities for teaching each individual seminar, for development of teaching materials, and for development of the syllabus, as well as the supervision of the individual cases. So there are many cases which I have served as the sole supervisor on, or for which Michelle has served as the sole supervisor on over time. And we've developed expertise that's complementary and not duplicative, so that she will work on some things that I would work on, that I would that I could work on, but she's developed expertise and will defer to that within each other. So in this way, we're actually serving as partners together. Uh, and that allows students to see how partners can work um, uh, in terms of leading an organization, which we think is important, especially for those who are going to go into law practice or to work for an environmental consulting firm or managing partners, um, uh, maybe the, the model under which they are supervised. What I have found in all of this is that uh, one of the things that I love most is mentoring the students. It really is a lot of fun to see that kind of aha moment where they get it and uh, they recognize that they're not only learning how to do something, but they're actually doing it and they're doing it well. Students can become involved with the Environmental Law and Policy Clinic uh, at different points depending on which academic track they're taking. So students who are pursuing their JD in the law school uh, will be able to take the clinic beginning in their third semester or their second year, what we call the 2L year in the regular law track. And they can take it at any point in that after that third semester, so all the way through to their third year last semester. We do recommend that students take environmental law or administrative law or ocean and coastal law and policy prior to enrolling in the clinic. It just helps to ground them and uh, helps them kind of get accustomed to the vocabulary and the very different uh, forums that we end up working in. For international LLMs, we want to give them an opportunity to get acquainted with all of the foundational aspects of U.S. law that they learn in their first semester. So we reserve spaces for them in the spring semester, but we do not allow them to enroll in the fall semester in their one-year program. For the students that are pursuing their Master's of Environmental Management at Nicholas School or other graduate sc um, schools, we ask them to also have one semester under their belt. So they've gotten a foundation in their discipline in their home school before they apply um, to serve in the environmental law and policy clinic on the policy or science side. We have an application process um, for those slots as they are in heavy demand, not just in the Nicholas School, but also in the Pratt School of Engineering, as well as the Sanford School. We also allow PhD students to come in and we ask for PhD students that they work with their own a dissertation advisor to make sure that the timing in which they take the clinic makes sense for their research objectives, for any lab requirements that they have, and also that it's not going to interfere with their dissertation obligations. By thinking about how students can engage this material carefully over the course of their career, we are able to best match the student experience to the development of the student during their time here at Duke. The 
in addition to teaching students uh, the legal skills that they need, you know, the research, the analysis, the writing, uh, we really want to empower students to be good advocates. And that takes place in many different ways. Sometimes students are making presentations before elected officials uh, in a public hearing. Students also get involved in designing the communication materials that their clients might need uh, to advance their interests. As lawyers, words are our tool of the trade, but not everybody engages in the same way, and it can, that, that, that those words can actually serve as a barrier. And so we talk a lot about um, uh, you know, visual interests and uh, GIS presentation skills uh, that can deliver a message much more uh, effectively. Uh, a lot of our students end up uh, designing these fabulous uh, story maps uh, that are really, really great about telling the, the client's story, uh, telling the, uh, the details of an issue, um, but in a very accessible and uh, visually uh, interesting way. The legal skills that the students acquire in the environmental law and policy clinic are tailored around the cases to which they are assigned as well as the general instruction they receive in the seminar. But to help match student skill needs with the case needs, we use a survey instrument. We basically send out a survey to all of our students to get a sense based on their prior curriculum, studies that they've had, or prior work experience, what is their level of skill development in a variety of different skills, including many key legal skills which employers have identified. Then we match the cases that we have and the case needs that we have with the skills and interests that the students express. That helps us figure out which students to assign to which case teams, depending upon what we anticipate the case will develop into over the course of the semester. We represented an organization called NC Child over the course of probably about five years uh, in their long-term strategy to reduce uh, children's exposure to lead. So we designed educational materials that could be used in uh, public health facilities to educate women about you know, the potential lead burden that they were developing. It was really exciting to have students, you know, take the knowledge that they had and figure out how you can communicate this information um, visually uh, so that you don't encounter language barriers. Um, how you can make that information, which is really, really complicated um, from a biological perspective, accessible to people um, all across the spectrum. And so we had at least 21 students who worked together over the course of that time to dig into the research, to dig into the scientific information, and uh, refine a strategy and present it to uh, agency officials. A case that comes to mind may seem counterintuitive because this is a case that we didn't actually win. Uh, we worked with youth activists in North Carolina who were all under the age of 18. We were seeking on their behalf to get the Environmental Management Commission, which is the rulemaking body for the state of North Carolina for environmental rules, to impose limits on carbon dioxide emissions uh, in polluting industries in North Carolina. So multiple semesters involved multiple teams of students preparing and submitting very advanced legal work and scientific technical work supporting it, uh, showing the need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the state of North Carolina through regulatory efforts. While neither one of the petitions that we submitted was successful in the sense that what we sought to achieve, the rulemaking itself, never did come to pass, every, every goal that we had set and every um, item that we had put forth in our petition actually turned into policy. So students in successive years had an opportunity to see that occasionally uh, as advocates and occasionally as lawyers, we will file cases and lose those cases. And yet we will find that the issues that we were advocating for actually make their way into policy in the state of North Carolina.
Students can get involved in their community after graduation through a variety of different means. Pro bono opportunities at their law firm are just one way that they can express their interest in this work and continue advocating for the communities in which they live. All it takes really is paying attention to the news, paying attention to what's happening in your community, and getting yourself involved in non-governmental organizations or nonprofits that actually serve the community in which you find yourself. The other thing that I like to do is advise students to join a local organization. Maybe it's the uh, local waterkeeper or the local chapter of the Audubon Society, Sierra Club, Wildlife Federation, something like that. Because that's just a really nice way to get educated about local issues that are coming up in the community you've joined. And it's a great way to meet people who share your interest. And you can go kayaking or birding or, or hiking with them.